Welcome everyone to this webinar. I'm Vincent Foano and I'm here from Gothenburg, the headquarter of Qualysis. I'm actually in our studio surrounded by dozens of cameras and different hardware, including also force plates. So we can show you today also do a hands-on demo. So we'll talk more about that later. Mm. Like I said, I'm Vincent Forno. I'm the team lead of the app team at What Is This? And today I have the, the, the great pleasure to welcome our special guest, Dr. Raphael Dumas. I'm Raphael Dumas. I was professor at the uh, University of Lyon. I've moved uh, 10 years ago to a full-time uh, researcher position in an institution that is now uh, University Gustave Eiffel. And uh, I have a background in mechanics, and I've been working on inverse dynamics and uh, body segment inertial parameters for many years now. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raphael. And um, uh, also, uh, I will be joined um, by my colleague, Libor, from the application team as well. But Libo will be more in the background during this webinar. He will be handling the question and answer section. Speaking of which, if you want to ask questions, please do not wait. Ask questions at any point by clicking on the icon that you can see on the screen, and you can find this icon directly on the Zoom application. So please, as soon as you have a question, whatever question it is, there is no stupid question, please uh, ask your question in this in this section and questions will be answered live or in a q a session which will occur at the end of this webinar the agenda for today is the the following i will start with an introduction about the qualysis cloud ecosystem and since today the topic is calculus i will focus on calculus a bit more I will then move on to our analysis modules at Qualysis and the difference between the traditional way that we had the past few years and this new way with calculus. Then I will move on to the different web report subscription options that you would like to use with uh, calculus. And then after that, uh, I guess very important thing because of this meeting, I will focus a bit on what's new in this uh, new version of Calculus 1.1. Then I will have the honor to leave the stage to Dr. Raphael Dumas, who is going to talk about inverse dynamics. Uh, what is it and why is it interesting? Then I will take over again for a small hands-on demonstration here in our studio. And I will conclude the, this webinar with some links to resources and finally the q a section here we go so the qualysis cloud ecosystem what it is so at qualysis we 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 try to be innovative and we saw this cloud um, being used a lot in our daily lives and we thought like in biomechanics this cloud can have a lot of benefits so a few years ago, we started to develop web reports and that are uh, the first component of the, of the cloud ecosystem at Qualysis. This web report is actually the results of your analysis. It contains all the different metrics and graphs that you would like to have as an output of your analysis. And in this web report, if you haven't seen it, it has all the graphs and table and also videos and charts and all the, the data are synced together. You can also annotate the charts individually and add exercises if you want to, for instance, give some recommendation to your uh, participant or to your subject about exercises that uh, he or she would like to, uh, would need to perform. And if you want to get a copy as well of, of this web report, you have the option to export it to a PDF. And even more customizable, you can also copy individual graphs and uh, table so you can put them in your own reporting system or in your own reporting software if you want to and finally a very interesting feature as well is that 
if you have multiple sessions of the same subject over time, for instance, so if you want to compare one subject with another, you have a comparison feature, meaning that you can have all different sessions in the same report and compare the different sessions. The second component of our cloud solution at Qualysis is Report Center. And Report Center is about searching and filtering uh, the uploaded reports that you have stored. And as well from Report Center, you can share reports with users from your lab, so your colleagues, but also the subject itself who might not be from the, from, from the lab. So you can share a secret link with this person as well. From Report Center as well, you can create your own reference data. And if as well, you wish to have a more condensed layout, focusing on not all the variables that the analysis of the web report can contain, you can decide to customize this layout to just focus on the things that matter for you. And finally, you have the import C3D file functionality, which until now supports only the CGM data. So that's the two main components that have been out for a little while now. And since a year ago, we've added a third one, which is calculus. And calculus is about processing your data. Instead of doing it locally, it's doing it online. So that's the third component of this cloud ecosystem at Qualysis. And what we're trying to do is trying to be as open as possible. So we try to make all the different processing steps and pipeline that are defined available to, to everyone who wants to have a look at it. And finally, since the data are stored in the cloud for the processing, it makes the reprocessing a lot easier and possible to automate it. Moving on a bit more to, to calculus, so does it work? Here is a brief overview. So calculus works with input data, of course, and we use the input data as the JSON file exported by our software, QTM. And this JSON file include marker data, analog data, so if you have EMG data, for example, and also force plate data. So that's the input data for calculus. And calculus, this the engine behind it, you use also the pipelines. So it will load a pipeline where you define your analysis. And this pipeline is made of multiple steps. And like I said before, we try to be as open source as possible. So we have stored the pipeline and the steps that are making pipelines visible and available to everyone on GitHub. So if I switch tab now, I you can have a look here and you can have a look by yourself of course if you want to here i'm on the qualysis github page and actually in front of the calculus pipeline repository and you can see that we have different pipeline for different analysis we have one for baseball pitching one for cricket batting and one for cricket bowling we have one for cycling one for functional assessment a generic a generic one that is used in a more generic context context. If, for instance, you have something that is not baseball, cricket, or cycling, you can record whatever movement you want and have a generic report at the end. And finally, we have also the running one. And I would like just to spend a few seconds on, on how it looks like as an example. So we use this approach trying to make it easy to learn so you don't have to have prior knowledge of a certain programming language. So we try to use this case, a YAML file, and we define each parameter the following. So let's focus on the pelvis one. So we define parameter by giving it a name. In this example here, we have the pelvis height normalized to the static. There's an option to, it's not mandatory, but there's an option to say on which file we want to, cal to calculate this parameter. So you can use the where option and specify the name of the file. So in this case, we want to apply this, this calculation on all the files name running. And then the calculation includes a, a set of steps. So you need at least one or more, one or more steps. 
In this case, we have first the hips, which is the pelvis. So we take, we import the pelvis position. We name it hips dynamic. Then we take the same position, but this time for the static, and we call it hip static. Then we take this output, and we want to calculate the average vertical position of the pelvis. And so that's what we do by calling it hip static dot z. And then we want to, because we want to do the pelvic height normalize, we take a subtraction between the vertical one during the running and this previous value that we have calculated the average value during the static. And since the data are in millimeters and we want to see it in meters, uh, we have a step that converts from millimeters to meter. So this is roughly as an example how it works. And if you want to know more about all the steps, we have actually also another repository where you can have access to the documentation if you want to know how it works. So you go directly to the documentation and then you can navigate through the different steps definition. So for instance, if I click on the step notes here, you can see that we have created categories depending on the step, what it does. So we try to group all the steps together in different categories. And then you can go into details if you want to, to see how it works. Great. So now if I'm going back to my slide, so we have this input data calculus also using the pipeline and the steps. And at the end, it will output a report data meaning that you will get all the data that will be available to populate a web report at the end that will be stored on our cloud server um, and accessible to you. What are the main features for Calculus? So it runs online as you, as you imagine. It's fast, so on average, if you have like a, a file of three, four, five seconds, then it will take less than one second to process it. As you saw also, we try to not provide a black box. So all the steps and pipelines are open source and available on GitHub. You have a wide range of processing steps that are available as well. And we also try to make the parameter easily traceable. So you can go back from the parameter to the def you can link it to the definition in the pipeline. We have also this support for a template, which like helps you to not copy paste the code. And let's say that you have like multiple pipelines. You don't want to have like a, to copy paste the same code in all the pipelines. So we have this like template feature, which is like a set of steps that you can create and can be called from multiple pipelines. And since the you have less data locally. It's a cloud solution for biomechanical processing. It means that the workflow for reprocessing data is also very efficient and a lot easier than before. And finally, we have the support for EMG force plates and inverse dynamics. And we will talk more about it very soon. So now that you have seen it, so at Qualysis, like I said, we have different ways of doing an analysis. We have different modules, that's what we call. And we used to have only the traditional way, but now with calculus, we have a, a, a bit of a new way. So let's quickly look at it. So in both cases, both workflows are the same. So in the beginning, you have camera a camera system. You have your QTM software to do the data acquisition. And then you have an analysis module with the pane on the left side of QTM. You will see it later during the hands-on demonstration to organize your workflow and data collection, and also the entering of the different metadata that you might need. And in the, in the local or in the traditional, sorry, in the traditional case, the processing is done locally on the computer. And most of our traditional modules, they use Visual 3D for that. And at the end, once the analysis is done, it's exporting all the data and creating a web report stored on our server in the cloud. And the difference here with Calculus is that at this stage during the processing, the processing, instead of being done locally, it's going to be done in the cloud. And at the end, you will get 
the same report that you would get with the traditional approach stored on report center in the cloud as well. If we look at the differences, the main differences between the traditional modules that we had like a long since a long time ago and the, this new calculus module, the traditional module requires a specific license while with the calculus module, it's included into the web subscription option. Then the traditional module runs locally, as I mentioned it just uh, before, while for the calculus module, the processing runs in the cloud. With the traditional module, since it's been out for a long, long time, you have full flexibility in terms of modeling. You can create your own custom model. And the, in the calculus module, we are not at this stage yet, but the framework is, has been developed in a way that in the future, uh, it will be possible to create your own custom model. But right now, it supports only the Coalesi Sports Marker Set. Same philosophy and same logic with the pipelines. So in the traditional module, you can customize and create your own pipelines, while right now we only provide predefined pipelines. But once again, the framework has been developed so that in the near future, you will be able to create your own custom pipelines. Uh, two more points. In the traditional module, we follow more like a closed source approach or philosophy, while with the calculus module, we try to be more open where all the source code for the pipeline and the steps are available to you as a user on GitHub. And finally, in the traditional module with this approach, we uh, one module per session. So let's say that you want to do baseball or you want to do running. It means that you need a module for running, a module for baseball, a module for functional assessment, which makes as a user, like, which makes the user experience a bit more difficult than using a single module. And that's why in the calculus module, we use the single analysis module approach where you have one single module where all the sessions, baseball, running, functional assessment are part of the same module. So it's a lot easier for you to use as a user, but also it's a lot easier to handle for maintenance and updates. Regarding the software that you need, with the traditional module, you need QTM, you need an analysis module, Visual 3D in, in this case of the traditional module. And optionally, if you want to have a web report at the end, you will need a web report subscription. In the case of, of the calculus module, you will still need QTM. You will have the specific calculus module. And it is required to have a web report subscription in this case. Speaking of web report subscription, so when do I need as a user a web report subscription, you might ask. And the answer is very, very easy. It's that a web report subscription is required for both traditional and calculus modules if you want to use web reports at the end. So if you're at the end of your workflow is a web report, then you need to have a web report subscription. And we have organized it into different plans. So you have for free, you don't need to even ask or subscribe to anything. As a user, you already have access to Calculus and to the free plan. So for, with the free plan, you get up to 10 reports that you can upload. And then you have like different plans. And the main, the main criteria actually is like the storage of the reports. So it goes from 10 for the free to, one, for instance, like 100 for the basic and 1,000 for the premium level. But in all of them, you will have access to the same sessions. So same features from this point of view, you have the generic running, cycling, baseball, cricket, and functional assessment available in all of them. Great. So now let's move on to what's new in this new, in this calcul, in this calculus update 1.1.0. First of all, we have support for EMG, meaning that you can get your EMG signals into your web report and they can be processed and display in the web report. Same for the force plate. Now we are supporting the force plates with a center of pressure available, forces available from the force plates and a moment as well. Uh, also very important, very requested 
session to be able to to be used by by users is the functional assessment session which include 18 tasks and all these 18 tasks are actually the same that we provide in our traditional FA module so we're trying to be consistent with what we are doing and finally last but not the least we have also the support for inverse dynamics which will help you as a user to have access to joint forces joint moments and joint powers and this is the perfect segue now for the second part of this webinar and i will leave the stage to you rafael so please thank you very much i will share the screen okay be okay now. So I'm very happy to share today with you some thoughts about uh, inverse dynamics and especially the branch and quaternion method we have been proposed a few, year, few years ago. Inverse dynamics is not for, for a long time and it has been seen as a very important uh, feature in biomechanics because moment of forces, power, give, give us insight into how the central nervous system is, move, is working especially integrated patterns, synergies, and uh, drawn talks can help us to know what are the cause of different movements, especially why and how aberrant movement occurs. And from a mechanical point of view, the existence of a drawn talk is to be discussed a bit because two opposite moments of force is not exactly the case because you may have multi multiple, multiple uh, joints multiple, sorry, biarticular or multiarticular muscle and muscle who are inserted in different segments. So a pure torque due to one muscle is not exactly the case. More recently, the International Society of Biomechanics has come with uh, recommendations. One is to talk about intersegmental joints and forces instead of joint, uh, uh, I get confused. Once again, to, to talk about intersegment forces and moments and not joint forces and moments because sometimes you have different joints. For instance, in the knee, you have the tibiofemoral and the patellofemoral joints. So one way to have this clear is to talk about intersegmental forces and moments. And what it is, it is the action, the mechanical action of the skin, fat, fascia, muscle, ligaments, friction and contact. So I have one remark here is that in terms of interpretation, the intersegmental force is not so easy because it's the resultant of everything. It's much more easier for the joint moment or the intersegmental moment, because if you have in the joint one axis that is a, with a very small amount of rotation, it can be seen that in a first approximation, the, the resultant moment is the main action of the atomic, anatomical restraints. That is to say, the articular contacts, the ligaments. And in case of large rotation about the joint axis, it will be uh, the moment that is representative of the action of musculotendon units. So now how to have access to the intersegmental uh, moment and forces? We need to compute the equation of motion. So starting for motion analysis data, we have ground reaction forces and moment. We have the position of the segment in space. We can have anthropometric tables giving access to segment masses, position of center of mass inertia. And with derivation, we will have the acceleration of the center of mass and we can have the equation of motion to get access because the only unknown will be the intersegmental moment and the intersegmental force. One way to do it is to use the Lagrange equation of motion, but it's a scalar way to compute that, meaning that you will have access to the amplitude of the motor moment about the remaining degrees of freedom of a multi-body system. It's very useful in case of complex joint definition, and it's also very useful for musculoskeletal modeling because this specific moment will be uh, the one who will be equilibrated by liver arms times musculotendon forces. Most of the time, we are, we, we are using recursive Newton-Euler equations 
Here it's a vectorial uh, way to compute things. So we have 3D forces and 3D moments. We use a free body diagram. We need to think about a specific center for the joint where the resultant of all the mechanical action can be computed. And in this case, we are thinking more about revolute or spherical joints to represent the anatomy. Um, and there are different ways to do the math. So in the literature, we have seen method based on vectors, early angles, homogeneous matrices, and we have been proposing in the past one using wrenches and quaternions. To go more into detail, in a more classical way, the position of a segment is space is generally given by an origin, let's say the proximal joint here, plus three early angles. First, we will compute the sum of the forces that equals the mass times the acceleration. And in this case, it's very convenient to write this equation in an inertial coordinate system, ICS here, because the weight is involved and we have gravity. And then we will compute the sum of the moments, for instance, at the proximal joint. And it, the sum of all the moment and moment of forces will be equal to the derivative of the angular momentum. And here it's much more convenient to do the maths in the local coherent system, the segment coordinate systems, because this derivative is not so easy to compute. So at the end, a second remark here, in the classical approach, we have multiple chances of coordinate system between the local and the global one. So with the rest notation and quaternion notation, the error angle have been removed and changed by quaternions. And the dynamics is written with wrenches. So the sum of the wrenches at proximal, distal, and weight equals the dynamic wrench. It's exactly the same kind of equation, but here we take advantage of using a six component vector. Everything is written in this compact form and already everything in the inertial coordinate system. If we want to go further into now the dynamics, we need to have the acceleration computed. I will not, not go into details into the acceleration, but I will give you insight for the velocities. So in a classical, way, we need to have the position of the center of mass in the inertial coordinate system. We know its local position in the segment coordinate system with an anthropometric table. And to change the coordinate system, we cannot use the early angle directly. We need to transform them into rotation matrices. And then for the derivatives, to have the velocities of the center of mass as well as the angular velocity, we will have the derivation of the early angle plus also some trigonometric function involved. If we compare with a quaternion notation, everything will be done with four vectors and a specific algebra, but everything is done with, uh, I mean, the, the change of coordinates, the derivative, everything is a more in a more compact form. So to wrap up, Intersegmental moments are very interesting in biomechanics. They give us the causes of the movements. Depending on the joint axis, it will rely on the muscle tendon, ligament, or contact actions. Generally, we are using the equation of motion in a form of Newtonian recursive equations. There is a way to do something that is an alternative to the classical vector and laryngeal methods which is not so convenient because of uh, transformation from a angle to rotation matrices, multiple change of coordinates, some trigonometric function involved. So we have been proposing in the past the branch and quaternion method, which is more compact, efficient, and expedient. We only deal with uh, four or six component ve uh, vectors. We have well-defined algebra. And something we have not discussed here today is that also there are advantages with quaternions. They have direct relation with the helical axis in terms of uh, interpretation, and they can be interpolated smoothing in a very efficient way. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. I have absolutely nothing to declare as a conflict of interest for the implementation in calculus or this presentation today. Great. Thank you for specifying that. Thanks a lot, Raphael. I will take over the screen again. And moving on to the next part of our webinar. And after this great summary of 
Raphael Dumas regarding inverse dynamics, we're going to move on to a hands-on session where actually I'm going to be, if I switch cameras, so you can see that I am in the studio and I was not laying when I was saying that we have also force plates. So you can see force plates on the floor. And today I'm joined by my one of my other colleagues, Ricard. He will be our subject for, for today. And as you can see, he's wearing markers a bit everywhere on his body. So like I mentioned earlier, we are using the sports marker set right now because this, this is the only one that is supported. It's a combination of 41 markers placed in different segments. And today we're going to use that, of course, and we're going to use that in the functional assessment context. So we're going to do a few squats and hopefully we'll not get injured. So let's get started. Uh, let's switch to QTM, our software. So this is the software, QTM, if you haven't seen it before. And the first thing that you have to do is to create a person. You provide an ID. So let's say that's number five and his name is Ricardo or Richard. And last name. Then we click on OK. And then after that, we create a visit. Once the visit is created, you can see, like I said earlier, that this is this is a single analysis module with all the sessions available in the single module. So today we're going to show functional assessment. I'm adding is height and weight. Once that step is done, functional assessment has multiple tasks, like I said, 18. And mandatory is to have a static session to create the model of the, the subject of record, so the biomechanical model. And like I mentioned just before, we're going to do squats. So we have a squatting subsession. Once these two subfolders are created, we're going to record a static, like I said, so I'm going to ask Ricard or Richard to step out of the force plate. And I'm going to click on capture. I'm going to fetch the trigger, so a physical button, so I can just press on the button. So it's going to step on the force plates very well. And then I'm going to click on start. Great. So what we can do, actually, I can see that we have a small issue. So we can see that some markers are not labeled properly. So we can maybe create an overcapture and see if it works better. So stand still. Great. So now the labeling is perfect. All the markers are labeled. Perfect. And the next step is to record a couple of squatting trials so let's start so i'm going to ask Ricard to step out of the force plates before i click on capture and now you can step on the force plates and ready go very good we're going to record the second one so step out of the force plate thank you and then I'm clicking on capture. Then I'm going to wait for. We can, he didn't wait. He was a bit in a hurry. So let's do it again. I'm clicking on capture, wait for the trigger, step on the force plate. Very good. And go. Thank you. So now I'm going to switch to the other camera. So the recording is done. I'm going to put the, mark, the trigger down. And all the recording, all the recordings are done. So the first thing that you have to do in calculus, uh, it works the same way for all the sessions. You have to first create a skeleton. So create a model. And our internal sol solver will create a skeleton for that for all the files that you have recorded based on the static. 
And the second step is to export the data so they can be processed in the cloud by calculus. So let's do the first step first, which is to create the model and get the skeleton into each file. So we have a step here because we want it to run over all the different subfolders. So if you have multiple subfolders, we want to run through all of them. So we have a, a step called solve skeletons. This step, as you can see, is very quick. And if I open the files, you should have inside the file, now I'm, I'm opening the first one, you have now this orange stick figure, which is the, the proof that you get like a, a skeleton. And you have that for also for, for the second squat. So you see it's very, very quick. And the second step is that now we want to generate a web report or at least send the data so that calculus can generate a web report. So what we do now under the squatting session, we have two different web reports that we can generate. We have the a generic one that we call kinematics web report, but we have also the functional assessment one. And today, of course, is a functional assessment session that we are running. So we want to have something specific to functional assessment. So we're going to run that one. So I'm going to click here. And what this step is doing, like I said, it's exporting all the file, if you remember correctly, as a JSON file with all the data, sending that to our cloud where our calculus server will process all the data and get also the pipeline and the steps. And you can see it was very quick. I did not have time to finish my sentence and generate the report at the end. And if you haven't seen the web report before, it looks the following way, where you have kinematics first, at least the lower body, with all the different angles. So the rows are the segments and the columns are the different planes, anatomical planes. And after that, since we have implemented the support for force plates and inverse dynamics, we have a lower body kinetics section organized the same way with the different joints and the different planes, as well as the power for all the joints and the access as well to the different, to the three components of the force plate data, both left and right. So that's why you have two curves here. And then we have the, the upper body the center of mass section, and we usually add for all the different report types, we add metrics at the end. So you have access also to, to some numbers specific to each session. You have also, if you haven't seen it, you have access to the 3D viewer here. So you can play the motion and move to one child or another one. And if you want to know more about it, you can just go directly to report.qualities.com and look at some demo reports that are accessible to you without any login. Great. So let's move back to the PowerPoint and the last part of it. So before I go into this section about resources, please, if you have any questions, you still have time but we are very close to the end. So please uh, use the Q&A feature and ask your questions in this section. Thank you. Regarding the resources, we have a few of them and those one will be sent to you after this meeting or after this webinar. You have a YouTube short intro. On qualis.com, you can find a lot of different resources. You have the online reporting web page where you have plenty of information regarding this topic you have access to a lot of brochures as well specifically about online reporting but also calculus and the different modules you have uh, the access to the q academy tutorial that we have updated because of this because of this new update as well and if you want to really get going you can directly go to colleges.com log in and you will see on your dashboard that you can have access to a demo project so you can get started very easily with sample data as well. And the last, the last important thing to, to remind you is that the, the calculus module doesn't require any extra license. And once again, you can use it straight away. You don't need to subscribe to anything. You have the possibility to create up to 10 reports 
And if you have more than 10 reports, you can contact us or you can decide to delete the ones if you want to continue playing with it. Yep. So that was the main, the main, the main message for me to finish this webinar. So now it's time about our Q&A sessions. So please, maybe now you have more time to, to write your questions. Uh, I can see that we, we have had a lot of questions already. They have been answered by our colleague Libor Sumar. So there was one question about is calculus inverse dynamics available for all, session, all sessions, like running, functional assessment, etc. And the, reply, the, the response was yes and is yes. So as soon as the file, they contain false data, calculus will automatically detect it and will make kinetics data available, available for the pipelines, meaning that you will be able at the end to see the process data, including the, the kinetics. Uh, some other questions, maybe? Maybe I have one question for you, Raphael. Have you, yeah, since you, you are an expert in inverse dynamics, have you, have you had the chance to compare all the different methods and making sure that they give the same kind of output at the end? Yeah, in principle, they should be. They should give exactly the same results because mm -hmm. uh, it's Newton sum of sum of forces equal ma. But you need to do some derivative and some filtering after a derivative. And mm -hmm. the way you do that, depending on the parameter set, very angles, quaternions, or rotational matrices, anyway, it has an impact a bit on the curves. The peaks of acceleration are not exactly mm -hmm. computed the same. And mm -hmm. in terms of uh, robustness to noise, a layer angle are the worst because there are multiple computation. So the other are better, more robust to noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, thank you. But but in principle, it should be exactly the same equations. It's yeah. only numerical yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. And in terms of performance, I guess? I haven't checked. You haven't, you haven't, haven't checked? checked that, no. no. I cannot mm. say. Yeah. And maybe one last question from my side regarding this topic of inverse dynamics. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for it. What is the main thing that can create big differences? What kind of input creates as the biggest impact on the inverse dynamics? Is it like the modeling? Is it the body segment parameters? Or is it the method that you use? Or the filtering? Uh, the position of force plates. Yeah, oh, it's the position yeah. of the force. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if yeah. if you have uh, the, the very first big problem, if you have even small, because it's, if you, let's say for gates, the acceleration are very low, so the impact of inertia is not so high. So it's really mm -hmm. the position of the joint with respect to the center of pressure that mm -hmm. will be the, the very first uh, important thing. So small issues with the positioning of the force place when you are, uh, setting your lab, it, you will you may have trouble with that. Okay. And in the same idea, if you are computing inverse kinematics and it moves the joint too much because of the inverse kinematics, you will have exactly the same issue. It's not placed perfectly well with respect to center of pressure. You may you may have spurious moments due to that. Mm, I see. Thank you very much. All right. Do we have any more questions? Maybe. No, I think Libo answered all the 10 ish questions that we had. Great. But then I think it's time for us to, to say goodbye. I would like again to thank you a lot, all of you, the attendees, of course, but especially like Raphael, who took his time to be part of it. It was a great honor to have you in these two sessions, the morning one and the afternoon one. Thank and I uh, hope to see you somewhere yeah. soon. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.